Hello and welcome to this new video tutorial. We're going to see today face detection using Hard Cascade. To understand how it works, let's see first a quick example and explanation that I will try to make. We have this beautiful face and Hard Cascade, you, it works looking for features of the faces, in the faces call hard features which are this one one is this one so white and black because eyebrows in the face are always darker than the front so this is one feature for both the eyebrow the same will be for the nose the left side or the right side are different than from the center so this is another feature and on the eye for example the center of the eye will be always uh, more uh, darker than the sides where are white and the mouth which has always at least in the center one line darker line you can see this dark line in the center and so it will be something this way. Of course, this is a really rough explanation to get a glimpse of how the algorithm works. And it will be something like this, that it starts looking for the features from the top left of the window. Then it starts looking for the face here. It, it finds nothing, it keeps going, looking again and again until let's say it keeps going it finds nothing and then again it moves down and it starts looking 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 until it finds the first feature which is one eyebrow but it doesn't find anything else so it skips this rectangle because it's not enough and it keeps looking for until it finds the face like let's say going from left to the right it finds the face here the first face okay this will be enough to find the face one two three okay one face was detected and again again the rectangle moves let's say in this position still there is a face still there is a face oh uh, it moves and now there is not a face anymore so many rectangle here overlap and in this way we can say with uh, some accuracy that this is a face this is a rough explanation of course the algorithm is much more sophisticated and does much more than this but it's enough to understand what's deep down there now let's move on and let's write this ourselves to detect our face in real time. We import cv2 and we import numpy as np. Then we load the camera cap is equal to cv2.video capture 0 or different number if you have different webcams. 0 is my only and first webcam that I have while true now we take the video from the webcam underscore no uh, underscore comma frame cap dot read now let's show the frame c2 dot im show frame and then frame uh, wait key event key is equal to cv2 dot wait key one if key is equals to 27 which is the s key on the keyboard we break the loop don't forget to release the camera cap dot release and cv2 dot destroy all windows uh, let's run the code to see if everything is correct and if we can get the video from the webcam and here we have the video let's now go ahead and use the hard cascade method first we need to load the 
Arcas KXM file detection. You can find these files uh, in the link in the description of the video. Let's call the first one phase cascade, cascade, and for the moment we use just this one. It's equal to cv2.cascade classifier, and it should be, I don't remember the title, R cascade frontal face default. R cascade frontal face default.xml this file is a class uh, hard classifiers in simple words it has been trained using a huge uh, data sets of images so that we can use it later to describe the image and using this one we'll find the our faces and there are many, uh, there are arc cascades for basically everything, also for eye detection. Um, also, like I think, ant detection and so on. And you can train your own, but let's move on. It's not important at the moment. So we have the face cascade classifier. Now we need to use it on the image in real time to track the face. Let's convert the image to grayscale. Gray is equal to cv2.cvt color. The frame it's cv2.color underscore bgr to gray. And now let's detect the face. Let's call faces as it can be more than one face. It's equal to face cascade dot detect multi-scale we want to detect this on the gray image and then there is a scale factor how, how much we want to scale the image let's start with one which is we're using the original size of the image and then we will try different parameters and then there is this minimum neighbors it's the rectangle that overlaps. Let's use five and later on we will see the difference with less or more and why. What is this? For the moment just copy the number and later on we will see the explanation. Face, let's print and see what this does. Print faces. I get some error that there is no classifier. I, I think that I did a mistake writing this frontal face, R cascade frontal face default. Okay, probably now it's correct. Scale factor. Let's try with 1.1. Probably we, we cannot use the original number. Okay, and here we have the detection. You see nothing, but we're just printing these numbers. This face is, contains the position of the rectangle. So this will be X, Y, the, I think, width and height of the rectangle which contains our face so using this we can print uh, we can show the rectangle we can draw in the rectangle on the screen for uh, rect let's call this way in faces the rect will have x y width and height so let's take these values x y no, probably the opposite way uh, x y width and height are equals to rect and now we draw the rectangle using these parameters on the frame so cv2 dot rectangle on the frame 
then the x and y position and then we need the bottom right point so how can we detect the bottom right we add to the x we add the width so we will have the right point x plus width and then to the y we add the height and we, we will have the bottom point color let's use the standard color in that you can see usually in detection which is green so bgr format will be zero blue 255 of green and zero of red thickness let's say two without parentheses just two and this should be enough to print the face as you can see it's not perfect there is one problem that I'm wearing the glasses right now and the detection cannot work properly unfortunately I have to look at that side because my, my webcam is not in the first screen uh, you can see in a way that it works let's now change the, the parameters actually I have a better idea we can use a track bar so that we can change the parameters real time and see the difference so we can create new uh, window cv2.named window and uh, let's use frame window let's create now two track bars one is to change this value which is the scale and one is to change the neighbors t2.create trackbar mm. this one will be I think, I think first it's the name of the trackbar I don't remember trackbar name yeah scale and window name is the frame and it's and then the value let's say from let's say 11 and to a and then callback function nothing let's create here the callback function def nothing x and pass this function basically does nothing as you can see it's a callback function so that each time that we get we're not using the track bar we don't do anything it doesn't print anything anyway we create the second track bar similar process scale but not scale but neighbors from 0 let's say from 0 to 20 and now we call this values here first one we have the scale is equal to cv2 dot get trackbar position trackbar name is scale and trackbar window is frame so we copy this one then neighbors is equal to cv2 dot get trackbar position of neighbors and then window frame so we can use neighbors already in this part and as for the scale we need to use uh, float numbers so 1.1 1.2 and so on and here I'm not sure that we could use on the track bar such numbers let me see 1.1 to 20.0 I'm not sure but let's see otherwise we use a different way as expected we can use we need to use integers and okay we will use integers and then we will convert them to float so we'll use the scale number divided by 10 so when we have 11 it will be 1.1 and so on let's run it and see what we get 
First, let's understand what is neighbors. We, we detect the face, taking also into account at least three neighbors. The more we increase the number, the more squares must be detected to have a face. So we can have probably less false results, but sometimes even if there is, there is a face, it will not detect it. So if we use a really high number of neighbors, nothing will happen. If it's too low, it will take everything. So there, there is a face here, and there is here and here and so on. So a good number is from at least three or two, six or seven. Probably for three to five will be okay. What about the scale? Even the scale probably if we make it smaller. So the more we increase the number, the smaller image is going to use. So it's kind of opposite. And the problem is that the more we increase it for sure to use less computational power is working with smaller image, but it will be harder to detect correctly the face. Usually it's okay to use 1.1 to 1.4, and it must be 1.1 or above. If we go below, we will get an error, you can see. So it's not a good idea to use the, the track bar of the scale here. Let's just delete this track bar. Let's keep the one of the neighbors and a standard number use always is 1.3, which is the one that gives the best results. So no scale, but let's keep only the neighbor from standard of five and then we can change it when we want. Let's run this again. Um, anyway, this is for face detection, then you, we could go further in this and detect the eyes using a similar approach. The only difference is that we detect the eyes inside the face. It's unlikely that the eyes are outside the face, so there is no point to scan all the images, all the image. So we will take this rectangle extracted from extract this area from the original image and after that we can do the eye detection. I'm not going to do that in this video, that will be exercise for you. You can download the eye cascade classifier also from the link in the description. And now let's try to see how it works even if I go further. Uh, if you can see that it detects still my face even if it's really really small and I go closer and closer and I will say it's a decent result. This is all for this tutorial and thanks for watching.